Digital painting is something I've been wanting to give a try for such a long time now. And it is actually a video that I've seen many of you guys request over the years. But for some reason, I just haven't got around to it until today. In this video, I'm going to try drawing digitally for the very first time. And I'm actually going to try and paint something that looks realistic. Hey everybody, my name is Kirsty and my aim is to help you improve your drawing skills so that you can create art that you are really proud of. As some of you may have noticed, I haven't exactly been posting many videos lately and it may feel like I have disappeared from social media altogether. And that is because over the last eight months, I've been working non-stop on creating my first ever art training program the Coloured Pencil Academy. Now, this is a new course for anyone that wants to level up their coloured pencil drawing skills. And I will be launching this course on the 21st of June. So I'll leave a link to the waitlist in the description if you are interested in learning more details about this new course. But now that I've wrapped up filming the course, I have some extra time to play around with creating some new art. And I thought, what better way to get back into creating art for fun than trying digital painting for the first time. Something that I have wanted to do for years. So I bought a pen display, set it up, and started learning everything that I could about getting started with digital art because I really didn't know how to go about it. I was already used to using photoshops for creating things like YouTube thumbnails and editing photos, but I had no idea how to use it for painting. I was lost when it came to which brushes to use, how many layers I should paint on, and how to control the pressure of the pen. It all just felt so new and so different than drawing traditionally. So I started watching some great digital art tutorials for beginners on YouTube and tried to pick out the most important tips from each video. And I quickly learned that it would be best to approach my first painting with a less is more strategy. Because from the tutorials I watched, it was clear that some artists preferred working on lots of different layers and having a new layer for every element of their painting, whereas other artists preferred to only work on a couple of layers and approach digital art with almost a traditional painting style. After watching a few different tutorials and learning the basics of how to paint in Photoshop, I decided to jump straight in and try and paint my very first realistic digital painting. I decided to draw something that I'm very used to drawing, very familiar with, which is eyes. And I wanted to start by creating a basic sketch for this eye study. So I made sure to set up a new layer on top of the background layer. And I just started to sketch out the basic shapes for the eye, the iris, the pupil, as well as the shape of the eye and the eyelid creases. And I just spent five minutes creating this sketch. So the first thing that I've done is just created a really basic sketch for the eye painting that I'm going to work on, as I thought it'd be best to approach digital art as I would any traditional piece. Just start with a sketch. That tends to be a good place to start. So I just used a simple round brush. I'll probably use that for the whole thing. I just want to keep it simple. And I made sure that the opacity of the brush was really low so that I could just lightly use my pen to create some really faint sketch lines. And then once I was more like confident with the sketch, I could apply a bit more pressure and reinforce those lines, go over them a bit more. And so now, I wanna jump in and try and block in some colors, not worry about detail, just try and establish some color for each area, just get in a base, a foundation of colors, and then we can go from there and add in all of the details. So I'm just gonna start blocking in the different colors for each area of the eye, and I wanna keep it as simple as possible, just use a couple of different colors for each part of the eye, just to establish where the lights and darks are in the eye. And one of the things I found most challenging was deciding the brush size. I feel like I definitely went a bit too small in these early stages with my brush. 
I feel like especially when I was blocking in the skin, I should have maybe used a bigger size brush because it could easily look very streaky and patchy. I think because I'm used to using tiny pencil leads to draw, I'm so used to building up all of the shading, just using a series of lines and building it up in lots of layers with lots of small lines overlapping each other. So in this case, I think it would have been a lot better just to use a big brush and block in the whole area of color using as big of a brush as possible to actually avoid this streakiness. And so that is something I'm definitely going to work on next time for my next painting because I felt like the skin was coming out quite patchy in these early stages, especially when I started to add in all of these darker shadows to the eyelids. Using too small of a brush has given it this sort of liney, streaky look that I'm going to have to try and fix somehow when I get to the next stage of this painting. But one thing that I definitely noticed that I was loving really early on doing this painting is just how I wasn't worried about making any mistakes. Nothing felt permanent. I always felt like I could go and rework areas and it just felt nice to have that, that flexibility and versatility with the painting. Nothing felt like a big deal if I made a little mistake or picked a different colour that was not accurate or, or didn't work for the painting because I could always just paint over it and that's not something that you can do with traditional art very easily. So I've just finished the second step, blocking in all of the colours. I think it's looking really nice, obviously we've got to add a ton of detail and it is looking a bit soft, a bit airbrushed, I'm really struggling with that, I'm finding it difficult to get some hard defined edges to my brush. Give me some tips in the comment section for that because everything is looking a little bit too smooth and over blended. So I'm going to try and fix that in my next step. But I've just sort of gone in, established where the shadows are, the lights, and just all of the different values in the eye and got in some basic colors for each area. And that was my whole sort of goal for this step, just get in some colors, get a foundation to build on top of. Onto what I knew would be my favorite step of the whole painting process, which is adding all of the details. And I was really excited to get started with the iris and try to actually add a bit more definition to the eye. And I thought that this would be most easily achieved when it comes to the detail stage. So I made sure that I increased the hardness on my brush and um, made sure that I was applying a little bit more pressure so the, the edges of my, my brush strokes weren't so fuzzy and soft. And I just played around with the different settings for the brush a bit more because I was finding it really hard to get the look that I was imagining, that I wanted. So obviously that takes a bit of trial and error and practice to get used to the tools and the settings and figure out what settings you need in order to create the look that you're going for. But I feel like I started to figure it out towards the end and I was able to create a bit more definition in the iris through adding all of these little details. And one of my favorite parts was working on the the bright reflections in the iris, getting those really bright, luminous green reflections that were going over onto the white of the eye as well. I really feel like they brought the eye to life and it was nice trying to glaze over those other more vibrant colors like the, like the blues in the reflection and the fleshy tones, the pink in the reflection of the, the white of the eye. It was nice trying to tint the colors and glaze different colors over the top. I found it so much fun experimenting with all of those different things, trying to get the look that I wanted using this new medium. And I also tried to make it as realistic as I could by really paying attention to detail. So I finished off the eye part by adding in all of the little veins inside the white of the eye. I've been working on this painting for another hour or so and I think it's starting to come together. I've managed to get a little more definition to my brush strokes. They, they are a 
still a bit more on the soft side, but I'm happy with how it's looking. I've really been focusing on just trying to get a lot more detail in the iris and in the white of the eye, like the little veins and the patterns in the iris, as well as establishing some reflections. And I am enjoying this so much, so much more than I thought I would, and I knew that I'd love it. It's just so much fun, it's so relaxing, I feel like I don't have to worry about making a ton of mistakes because nothing feels permanent, I can just keep reworking stuff until I get it how I like, and it's just so fun, so therapeutic. And so now I'm just going to spend a few more minutes just actually trying to add a bit more texture to the skin, add a few more wrinkles and a bit more of a sort of bumpy texture to the skin. And I especially wanted to lighten up a few of the areas of the skin, like the inner corner of the eye and this area over here, this side of the skin. And adding these highlights, they really take your paint into that next level. Before I added all of the highlights in the iris and the tear ducts, the eye just kind of looks quite flat. But as soon as I added in a couple of highlights, the whole painting just popped out of the screen and it just brings it to life. So don't underestimate the power of a, a good highlight. It really does take your painting to the next level, no matter what medium you're using or what, what sort of tool, whatever you're using to create art, highlights and your values are still key and all of the fundamentals are transferable. So even though I'm having to learn all of the different tools and the software, everything's still very much the same. You're still focusing on your art fundamentals, your values, your color theory, your, your textures and how you create those textures and blend the edges. So it's not really that different. There's not as big of a sort of learning curve as I thought they'd be, be, as long as you are familiar with how the software works, then you'll be fine. I decided that when I was drawing the eyelashes, it would probably be best to do them on their own layer, so that if I needed to adjust anything for the skin underneath, I wouldn't have to try and work between all of the eyelashes, I could just work on that underneath layer. And that's something that I found really useful with digital painting is that you can easily separate things into different layers so that you can go back and adjust parts of the painting without affecting other details that are on top. Which is also why I think digital painting is probably faster than traditional art. I was able to do this painting much quicker than if I was to do it traditionally. And so here it is, my first ever finished digital painting. I am honestly so proud of how this turned out. I wasn't expecting to be able to paint anything even halfway realistic. So the fact that I was able to paint something that does look realistic and it turned out pretty good, I'm just so, so proud of how it looks. And it's crazy how just adding a few eyelashes just really pulls the whole eye together and just makes it look complete. It just really takes it to that whole other level. So that is my very first digital painting. I really enjoyed painting this and I'm definitely going to spend some more time leveling up my digital art skills. I know I've got so much to learn and the painting is far from perfect, but it felt like such a breath of fresh air to try something completely different to how I usually create art. Let me know if you want to see more digital art videos in the future and whether you have any tips for me for how I can get better with my digital art. Before you go, remember to join the waiting list for my new premium course, The Colour Pencil Academy, by clicking the link in the description. This course is all about giving you the tools and knowledge you need to be able to pick any reference you want and know exactly how to draw it realistically, all on your own without following loads of other art tutorials. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.